Hello everyone! In this video, I will be focusing on four topics, namely lethal genes, modifier genes, gene interactions, and pseudoalleles. If you recall, in my previous video, I mentioned um, the variations in phenotypic ratios, which uh, are exceptions to the Mendelian laws of segregation and independent assortment. Ano ba yung tinatawag natin na variations in phenotypic ratios? When we say variations, ito yung mga ratios na nagde-deviate sa 3 is to 1 and 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 na ratios ni Mendel. So, uh, aside from the topics na na-discuss ko last time, yung dominance relationships, particularly incomplete dominance, co-dominance, no dominance, and over-dominance, at saka uh, multiple alleles, itong apat na topics na ito, nagko-contribute din sa variations in phenotypic ratios. Why? Because uh, there were researchers uh, few years after, first few years after the rediscovery of Mendel's law, nag-conduct ng experiments yung mga researchers and um, natuklasan nila na hindi lang 3 is to 1 and 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 yung um, ratios, segregation ratios na uh, mapoproduce ng isang um, cross or mating, okay? Either between plants or between uh, animals. So, yun. Um, medyo marami-marami yung uh, topics na i-discuss ko ngayon So I hope you will uh, um, grasp the key takeaways of this video So let's start our discussion So let's start first with lethal genes okay? So a large proportion of genes in our genome kasi are essential for survival And uh, lethal alleles arise when a mutation to a normal allele disrupts the function of an essential gene. And without this essential gene, the organism dies. So lethal alleles are called so because they cause death of the organism that carries them. And they can also be termed as lethal genes or simply lethals. By the way, lethal alleles can be embryonic or postnatal. When we say uh, embryonic, the organism dies even before birth. Or postnatal, when we say postnatal, the organism dies after birth. So either um, before reaching reproductive age or after reaching reproductive age. Sometimes kasi death is not immediate. It may even take years depending on the gene. Now, lethality may exist as recessive or dominant. When we say recessive lethals, they are expressed only when they are in the homozygous condition. And most of the lethal genes in our genome are recessive lethals. So, konti lang yung dominant lethals. Since uh, na-express lang yung recessive lethals in the homozygous condition, the heterozygotes survive, they remain normal, or they are not affected. Let's consider this example in here. We have here a mating between two heterozygotes, and basing it from the Mendel's law of segregation, a monohybrid cross should produce a 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio in the F1. However, in this case, we only have 2 is to 1 phenotypic ratio. So where did the other one go? The other yellow mouse died in the early embryonic stage. So if you notice, we are talking in here of recessive lethals. Okay? But the allele causing the death of the mouse is the dominant Y allele. Okay, so I would like to highlight that recessive lethals can code for either dominant or recessive traits, but they do not actually cause death unless the organism carries the two copies of the lethal allele. Okay, and the dominant Y allele in here is the lethal allele. Another reason why this is considered recessive lethal is that only the homozygous dominant individuals died. And that is a requirement for an allele to be considered a recessive lethal. Just like in here. So this uh, diagram in here, the Punnett square, can also be done to produce the ratio 2 is to 1. Okay? Pwede rin gamitin ito, pwede rin ito. Whichever is more convenient to you. Okay? So other examples... 
In humans, we have here cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, and achondroplasia. So, let's start with cystic fibrosis. Ano ba yung tinatawag natin na cystic fibrosis? So, this is actually a hereditary disease. So, lahat sila hereditary. So, it affects the lungs and the digestive system. So, the body produces thick and sticky mucus that can clog the lungs and obstruct the pancreas. And this can be life-threatening. And people with the condition tend to have a shorter than normal lifespan. So, sa sickle cell anemia naman, this is an inherited red blood cell disorder. So, normally, round red blood cells move easily through the blood vessels. But in the case of sickle cell anemia, there is insufficient healthy red blood cells to carry oxygen throughout your body because of their sickle shape. And for the achondroplasia, this is uh, a genetic disorder whose primary feature is dwarfism. The arms and the legs are short while the torso is typically of normal length. So those affected have an average adult height of 4 feet 4 inches for males and in the case of females, 4 feet. Meanwhile, in the case of dominant lethal alleles, the presence of at least one dominant allele causes lethality or death in the organism. As such, both the uh, homodominant and the heteroindividuals die. Even if so, these dominant lethals are rare, very rare, because the allele only lasts for one generation and therefore usually not transmitted, contributing to their rapid elimination from the population. But when the individual that carries the lethal allele reaches reproductive age, there is a chance that this lethal allele is transmitted. So, we have here two examples, uh, Huntington's disease in humans and the creeper condition in chickens. So, the Huntington's disease, commonly abbreviated as HD, is a fatal genetic disorder that causes the progressive breakdown of the nerve cells in the brain. And with that, it deteriorates a person's physical and mental abilities, usually during their prime working years. And unfortunately, no cure has been discovered and developed yet. So ano yung uh, nangyayari sa mga individuals na mayroong Huntington's disease? So the experience involuntary jerking or fidgety movements of the limbs and the body. In uh, chickens, the creeper allele causes the legs to be short, this one, and stunted. So this individual here is a creeper, and this is a normal hen. This is a creeper, a rooster, and this is a um, normal rooster. So the heterozygous chickens, this one, will display the creeper phenotype. Okay, These heterozygous individuals will display this creeper phenotype. So if two creeper chickens are crossed, with this one using the Punnett square, we would expect a Mendelian ratio of 3 creepers is to 1 normal. But in this case, the ratio obtained is only 2 creepers and 1 normal. Now let's talk about the penetrance of lethal genes. It actually varies whether recessive or dominant lethal genes. Ibig sabihin, there are um, some lethal genes which have a high degree or low degree of penetrance and expression, allowing um, little or no survival among the affected genotypes beyond the expression or beyond the embryonic stage, rather. When we say penetrance of lethal genes, this refers to the proportion or percentage of people with a particular lethal allele who exhibit signs and symptoms of the said mutation. And with that, we have the so-called semi-lethals. Ibig sabihin, they permit a large proportion of affected genotypes to survive. In short, there are those people, even if they carry a lethal allele, some of them survive.
Also, lethal genes may be influenced by the environment in the sense that the organism may be able to survive under permissive conditions and cause lethality or death under restrictive conditions. So, such lethals are called conditional lethals. So, these are conditional because they can cause death of the organism under certain environmental conditions only. That's why mayroon tayong permissive conditions. Ibig sabihin, inaallow yung yung organism to survive at this particular condition and sa restrictive conditions namamatay yung organism because it restricts, no? Literally restricts the organism to survive at this particular condition. Now, let's have modifier genes. What are these genes? So, these genes are the ones that affect the phenotypic or molecular expression of other genes in a quantitative fashion. The specific modes of action of the modifiers are not always known. But as a rule, modification is achieved either through dilution or enhancement of the effects of the major genes. And the uh, Modifiers of mutant genes also exist. In some cases, they completely suppress the phenotypic expression of the mutant gene. And these modifiers are called suppressors. And modifiers may be dominant or recessive. They may also have large or small quantitative phenotypic effects. So instead of masking the effects of another gene, a gene can modify the expression of a second gene, just like in this example. So in mice, the coat color is controlled by the B gene. The dominant B allele codes for the black coat color, while the recessive B allele produces a brown coat. The intensity of the color, either black or brown, is controlled by another gene, D gene. Okay? At this gene, the dominant allele controls full color or expresses the full color, whereas the recessive D allele expresses or conditions a diluted or faded expression of the color coded by the D gene, B, B gene. Rather. Therefore, if a cross is made among mice which are heterozygous for the two traits, this phenotypic distribution will be observed. We have here 9 black, full black, 3 dilute black or faded black, 3 full brown, and 1, they should be diluted brown. So this genotype is full black because the dominant D allele is here. That is why it expresses the full color of the black. And then we also have here 3 dilute black because the recessive, the homozygous recessive, dilutes the color black. We have here brown, the dominant D allele expresses the full color of the homozygous recessive brown. And this one, we have homozygous recessive for the two traits. That is why the uh, homorecessive D dilutes or fades the brown color. So we have here a dilute brown. So 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. With Mendel's law, the expected distribution of the phenotypes would be different because there is an independent coding for the second traits genotypes for Mendel. The D gene in here does not mask the effect of the B gene, but rather it modifies its expression. There is no modification taking place if we follow Mendel's laws. That is why if we follow the, his law of segregation or, and independent assortment, we would, we would be expecting a different set of phenotypes. Okay, I hope that is clear for the modifier genes. So we are already done with lethal genes and modifier genes. Now let's proceed to the third topic for this video the gene interactions. Researchers discovered that genes were not merely separate elements producing distinct individual effects, but they could interact with one another, giving entirely different uh, phenotypes, and these interactions result in phenotypic ratios, which are different from those of Mendel's independent assortment. So we have here specific examples for the type of gene interactions and I will discuss each one in detail. So number one, we have here uh, novel phenotypes. In here, there is complete dominance in both gene pairs such that there are 
new phenotypes that result from the interaction between dominants and between two homozygous recessives. Example is comb shape in poultry. These are actually the different uh, shapes of comb in chickens. We have rose comb, pea comb, walnut, single comb. Okay? So crossing a rose and a pea, we produce a novel phenotype and that is a walnut with a heterozygous genotype. By sieve mating or mating these uh, walnut comb chickens among themselves, we produce this set of F2 individuals with a phenotypic ratio of 9 walnut, 3 rose, 3 pea, and 1 single. What do you notice in here? So, uh, the interaction of the dominant P and the dominant R alleles produces walnut comb, while the interaction between the homozygous P, homozygous recessive P, and the homozygous recessive R produces a single comb. So, that is how the interaction of these two genes, R and P, produce the novel phenotype. So next type of gene interaction is recessive epistasis, wherein there is complete dominance in both gene pairs, but one gene, when homozygous recessive, hides or masks the effect of the other. A typical example is coat color of mice. Uh, coat color is controlled by gene A, while the expression of color is determined by gene C. Again, we have here gene assignments to uh, A and C. So, agouti is dominant to black and uh, color expression is dominant to color inhibition. This means that the agouti color is expressed when the mouse carries both the dominant alleles A and C. This also implies that even if the organism carries the dominant allele for coat color, if it carries with it recessive allele C, then the color will not be expressed. As a result, magiging albino yung kulay niya. Same is true with the case of the black coat color. So, for the black color or black coat color to be expressed, dapat kasama niya ay dominant allele C. Okay? Kung ang kasama ng genotype na homozygous recessive A ay homozygous recessive C, mamamask or mahahide yung black color. As a result, magiging albino din siya. So for, for you to further visualize yung sinasabi ko kanina, we have here a cross between uh, two individuals. We have a black mouse and an albino. Okay, so black, bakit ito black? Because uh, the homozygous recessive A codes for the black coat color and uh, na-express yung black coat color kapag kasama niya ay at least one dominant na letter C. So black yung uh, kulay. This one is albino because of the presence of the homozygous recessive C. So it hides or masks the Phenotype for homozygous dominant A, which is agouti. So if you cross a black with an albino, the resulting uh, F1 will have a genotype heterozygous for the two traits. So we have here dominant A, recessive A, and dominant C, recessive C. So ano yung magiging kulay nito? Agouti. Because the, uh, um, the allele for... Uh, expression or the genotype in here is uh, heterozygous for color expression that means the color agouti is expressed okay so the f1 when we uh, self them or uh, when we uh, do sieve mating or mate among themselves we produce this type or set of f2 individuals so nine agouti three black Three albino with this type of genotype and then one albino with this type of genotype. So that the phenotypic ratio of the F2 would be 9 agouti, 3 black, and then 4 albino. Okay, what does this mean? The interaction uh, explains that the homozygous recessive C 
is epistatic to agouti and black. That means the homozygous recessive C hides, conceals, or masks the expression of the coat colors agouti and black. So I hope that is clear. So to have um, a real example, okay, we have here this uh, Punnett square, okay? So this is actually a cross or mating between uh, the F1 individuals or among the F1 individuals, Agouti, because uh, their uh, genotype is heterozygous for the two traits and it carries the uh, color expression dominant and uh, it also carries the dominant allele A, which is Agouti. And then you uh, segregate the gametes, these are the gametes of the parents, and then you combine, you produce this set of F2 in here. And then you count how many agouti are there, we have 16, or uh, 9, 9 rather, 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so if you check, the agouti mice should carry the dominant alleles A and C. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. For the black coat color, it should carry the homozygous recessive A and at least one dominant allele C. So 1, 2, and then 3. So these are black individuals or black mice. And then we have the albino wherein dapat kasama niya yung or present yung homozygous recessive C, whatever genotype is in here, either homozygous dominant, heterozygous, or homorecessive. Basta present yung homozygous recessive C, ang kulay ay albino. So that the phenotypic ratio, we have here 9 agouti, 3 black, and 4 albino. So next is dominant epistasis. It is of two types. Yung isa, um, there is complete dominance in both gene pairs, but one gene when dominant hides or masks the effect of the other. Sa pangalawa, um, there is also complete dominance in both gene pairs, but one gene when dominant is epistatic to the second, and then the second gene when homozygous recessive is epistatic to the first. So uh, let's have this one first, okay? So we have here an example. So an example for this type of dominant epistasis is fruit color in summer squash. So we have here two genes, W and Y. And then the gene assignment is that white is dominant to color um, and yellow is dominant to green, okay? So pag present daw yung dominant na allele, ma-express yung phenotype na white. Kapag present yung dominant na uh, Y, ma-express yung phenotype na yellow. Ganun lang yun. So, when dominant W is present, white is expressed. When dominant Y is, is uh, present, the phenotype yellow is expressed. Let's have here a cross between a white and a yellow. Okay, so bakit white yung phenotype nitong individual na ito? Because the dominant allele is present in this genotype. Okay, and we have here yellow because the dominant Y is present. That's why the phenotype that is expressed is yellow. So the cross between white and yellow individuals produces an F1 with a phenotype white. Bakit white? Because the dominant allele W is present. And ang rule kanina, white is dominant to color. And this one, kahit present yung Y, dominant Y allele, which codes for yellow, Kahit present yung dominant Y allele, pero present yung W na dominant, white pa rin yung may express Because white is dominant to color. Next, there is submating, selfing, or mating among the white individuals. So we mate the F1 among themselves. We produce this uh, F2 individuals. We have nine white 3 white again with different genotype. We have 3 yellow and 1 green. Okay. Bakit white? Again, ulitin ko. Dahil present yung dominant 
W allele. Okay? Kapag present yung dominant allele W, automatic white yung phenotype, yung fruit color. Kapag present yung dominant Y allele at recessive yung kasamang um, genotype, homozygous recessive yung kasamang genotype for the other gene, yellow yung magiging phenotype. And then kapag homozygous recessive silang dalawa, the color expressed is green. So I hope that is clear. So what interaction now is observed? That is the dominant white hides the effect of yellow or green. Okay? Basta present yung dominant allele W, white yung may express na phenotype. Okay? So I hope that is clear for um, the first type of dominant epistasis. Now let's proceed to um, the another type of dominant epistasis. So again, uulitin ko, there is complete dominance in both gene pairs, but one gene when dominant is epistatic to the second, and the second gene when homozygous recessive is epistatic to the first. Okay? An example of this is uh, the feather color in poultry. So yung nandito ay uh, um, chickens. Ang example ko dito ay chickens. So we have here gene assignments again for uh, genes I and C, wherein color inhibition is dominant to color expression. So, dominant daw yung color inhibition. And then, color is dominant to non-color. So, a cross between two white chicken, uh, two white uh, poultry species, we have here white leghorn and white wine dote, for example, this produces white also. Bakit? We have here the rule Kapag dominant yung letter I, mai-inhibit yung kulay. Okay? We have here color is dominant. It says here. So, dapat may express yung kulay because C is dominant in here. But, we also have another gene in here, color inhibition. So, mai-inhibit yung color na letter C na ito, whatever color is this may inhibit itong um, phenotype na ito because of the dominant I in here. Again, pati rin dito. Okay? Non-color yung homozygous recessive. By the way, this should be letter C. I'm sorry for the uh, typographical error. Okay? Um, white, bakit white ito? Because this homozygous recessive C is non-color. Ibig sabihin, white. Walang kulay, white. And this homozygous recessive says that the color should be expressed, basing it from the gene assignments. So we cross these two white chickens in here, we produce this F1 individuals with this phenotype, white. And then yung genotype niya ay heterozygous for the two traits. Okay, bakit white? Again, we have here a dominant I, which inhibits the color in here. Okay? So, white yun. And then, we have here sieve mating, selfing, or mating among themselves. Among the F1 individuals, we produce this F2 individuals. We have uh, 13. Naging 13 na yung white and the isa lang yung colored. Okay? Bakit? We explain this. We have the presence of dominant I, which is masking the dominant allele C. Okay? We also have here a dominant I which masks this letter C, homozygous recessive. And then, another white because the homozygous recessive C is for uh, non-color. Okay? Present yung non-color dito. So, non-color ibig sabihin puti. And then, yung recessive, homozygous recessive I, I for color uh, expression. That's why na express yung non-color. So, white. And then, why? Uh, and then, uh, one rather, we have a dominant letter C in here, which is uh, coding for color. And then, uh, a homozygous recessive I, which says that the color should be expressed. Okay? So, an explanation for the interaction, the dominant color inhibitor prevents 
color even when color gene is present. So the color gene, which is the homozygous recessive C, prevents color even when dominant inhibitor is present. Next, we have complementary genes wherein there is complete dominance in both gene pairs. But the recessive homozygote is epistatic to the effects of the other gene. Ang ibig sabihin nito, basta present yung homozygous recessive na genotype, mamamask or makukonceal yung phenotypic expression ng isang genotype. So ang example is the flower, uh, flower color of the pea. Okay, let's have gene assignments for uh, genes P and C. So purple is dominant to white and color is dominant to non-color. Okay, ang tatandaan nyo lang dito, basta present ang homozygous recessive na genotype, uh, hindi na may express yung uh, phenotype ng kasama niyang genotype. So we have here two parents, purple and white. So ito ay purple because um, the... Homozygous recessive genotype is absent. Basta absent yung homozygous recessive genotype, may express yung um, isang genotype. So this homozygous dominant P is purple. And then we have here white because the homozygous recessive uh, genotype is present. So the cross produces the F1 individuals with purple phenotype and the genotype is a hom uh, heterozygous genotype. And then there is sib mating among these F1 individuals, we produce the F2, wherein we have 9 purple and 7 white. Bakit taging 7 na yung white, which is deviating from the loss of Mendel, which is uh, 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, yung ratio ni Mendel. E dito, naging 9 is to 7 na. So, 9 purple and 7 white because the presence of at least one homozygous recessive genotype would lead to a white flower color. Okay? So, ito, homozygous recessive, ito, homozygous recessive, ito, homozygous recessive. That is why um, ang resulting phenotype ay white. White uh, flower color of the pea. So, ano yung explanation dito? The interaction says that the genes P and C produce enzymes that catalyze successive steps in a chemical process leading to a production of pigments. So, to explain this further, we have here a diagram. Kapag daw um, present ang gene P, which produces the enzyme P, merong um, nakakatalyze nito ang reaction wherein the precursor is converted to white. Okay? Kapag present naman yung dominant C na allele, which produces the enzyme uh, C, Dominant C, we have here purple because C codes for color, okay? Okay, if this is absent, if this uh, is recessive, walang purple na, na mapoproduce rather. That is why nagsistop yung reaction dito sa step na ito. And ang resulting phenotype is white. So let's proceed to the last type of gene interaction, the duplicate genes, wherein there is complete dominance in both gene pairs, but either gene, when dominant, is epistatic to the other. Okay, so we have here uh, gene assignments for genes A and B. Pareho lang sila. Um, triangular is dominant to ovoid. Okay, so we have here a uh, cross between uh, um, triangular and ovoid seed capsules of uh, the shepherd's nurse or bursa, sabi dito sa gene assignments, basta present yung dominant allele, triangular yung phenotype. Whichever allele is that, A or B. Okay? So, since present ang dominant allele dito, we have triangular na phenotype. Dito, absent yung dominant allele, we have an ovoid. So, ito yung triangular, this is the ovoid. Okay? So, the cross or the mating produces the F1 individuals with a triangular seed capsule. And the, the, fin the genotype has a dominant allele, okay? So the selfing or seed mating among these F1 individuals, among these triangular seed capsules, produces the F2 with a phenotypic ratio 15 na triangular and isang ovoid. Bakit ang daming 15 na triangular? Because 
dominance, itong sa genotypes nila, may isang at least dominant allele. So we have here a dominant allele, we have here a dominant allele, we have here a dominant allele producing the triangular uh, seed capsule. Because sabi dito, either gene when dominant is epistatic to the other. So yung dominant allele, it masks or hides the expression of the phenotype of this corresponding genotype na kasama niya. Dito naman sa ovoid, ovoid dito because walang dominant allele na nagmamask sa expression ng phenotype ng kasama niyang genotype. So anong sabi dito sa interaction? So the interaction explains that the dominant allele at either gene pair hides the effect of the ovoid. Yun. So basta present daw yung dominant allele, hindi may express yung phenotypic expression nung isang um, genotype. So, as a summary, we have here a table of the types of gene interaction with their respective examples as well as the phenotypic ratios of the F2 which deviate from the uh, ratios observed by Mendel in his experiment on the common garden pea. So, yung novel phenotypes, 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Sa recessive epistasis, we have 9 is to 3 is to 4. Sa dominant epistasis, sa uh, first uh, type, we have 12 is to 3 is to 3. Uh, sorry. The dominant epistasis is 12 is to 3 is to 1, yung isang type. Sa another uh, type, we have 13 is to 1. And then sa complementary genes, we have 9 is to 7. And then lastly, for the duplicate genes, we have 15 is to 1. For our last topic in this video, we have the pseudo-alleles. So, pseudo-alleles were first demonstrated in 1951 by E.B. Lewis. And these pseudo-alleles are closely linked genes having similar effects. To further explain this, these pseudo-alleles are two genes with similar functions located on the same chromosome very close that are genetically linked. So, same chromosome but in different loci. Examples, we have star asteroid case and eye color in Drosophila. So, according to Lewis, when two dominants, we have here uh, dominant S and dominant AST, are on the same chromosome and their recessive counterparts or the mutant alleles are on the other chromosome, so ito yung sinatawag nating cis form or cis arrangement, normal eyes are produced. So normal eyes or, or yung wild type, yung phenotype. Okay? And then in the trans form or trans arrangement, when one dominant and one recessive are on one chromosome and the respective rece recessive and dominant alleles are on the other chromosome, um, the resulting phenotype is a mutant phenotype, which is a reduced eyes. So, much reduced eyes are observed. Okay? Uh, ito yung tinatawag niyang Lewis effect or position effect because the genotype and location uh, determines the phenotype of the individual. So, sa cis form, magkasama ang dominant uh, allele sa isang chromosome sa transform magkasama ang dominant at recessive sa iisang uh, chromosome. Okay? So, that's all for the four topics. Uh, for the little genes, modifier genes, gene interactions, and pseudo-alleles. Thank you very much for patiently listening. I hope you learned something from this video.